I think that's what this 50th is all about, the stopping to appreciate what we really have and how important it is. I remember when the Design Center opened um, in the 70s, there was a lot going on. In, in the 70s, I worked, uh, you know, our office was small and I worked a lot with an interior designer, Jean Jungleward, and uh, I was lucky enough to work closely with her on, on a number of projects. And I remember just going out to the design center with her and then also listening to her comments about, I like this about it, I don't like that about it. All the, you know, opinions that were going around uh, in the, in the uh, interior design community about the design center. And I think, you know, all those people caring so much about it and having, having their likes and dislikes about various things really did affect it. When I came to Seattle, not knowing a soul, the design industry was totally different. There was the big building down on Denny. It was called the Furniture Mart. But it was cheap stuff, not well displayed, and just a lot of furniture, really built more to people who own furniture stores to buy stuff. It wasn't designer at all. There was a group of design people. Marjorie and Paul Siegel moved from San Francisco and had a role in Terry building, built up on Olive Way, and they had five, six showrooms there in that building. So when Ben Arroy was talking about taking all those things away and coming out here at that meeting, he was courting all the design community to be supportive. And he had to get everyone to agree. Marjorie Siegel, who owned that building, had the leases on five different showrooms. She got them all to agree to move here. Once they built it and it was successful, I always felt I could bring clients here. And I have very good contact with the showrooms and never had bad experiences with it. Connections and the exposure is huge. In 81, I came to an event here and I had never been in the building and I spent most of the evening staring into the showroom windows and I've been here ever since. Design has certainly changed trends Styles have definitely changed. We had the mid-century styles and uh, stronger contemporary styles. Then you have also the influence of the internet, which has been tough for designers because there's a lot more that people can source on their own. That being said, it's not what they can find here. This is truly a custom environment. I never dreamt that I would, be, I would be still doing this 50 years later from when I started, but I can't imagine not doing it. I think you have to have a passion, uh, a desire to really create, and I think that just keeps you buoyant and moving along to do better and better projects. In the 1990s, the world began to change for us designers. It started with the introduction, obviously, of the internet. I mean, we have the capability of producing drawings that are amazing, creating visuals that allow the client to see exactly what their house, their project is going to look like, and it just makes it so much easier uh, for them to visualize what's, what it's going to be like, and that's helpful. It's remarkable how it's just completely spun out and to something totally new and different. It's exciting. I mean, it's really wonderful to see the possibilities that can be that we never dreamed possible. The influence of the Seattle Design Center for me during the 2000 to 2010 period was, was really strong and, and the, the major influences were just this vast international sense of inspiration. If I think about the time frame from the 2000, 2010 to where we are today is the accessibility of design and the value of design and that's not just interiors, that's just design at large, you know. Design is now a very valued piece of how we live on a daily basis and that's the, the largest change that I'm probably most profoundly grateful for is there's a recognition of what it means to our wellness, our well-being, our, our mental health, our uh, joyfulness and uh, design is you know, a key ingredient to our, you know, enriching our lives. I started design in 1993 when I graduated.
graduated uh, from college, I moved up to Alaska. I worked in high-end residential, and we used the reps from Seattle in Alaska, so I would always call down and have samples, request fabrics, because we didn't have the design center. So we used this one from afar. You know, going into this, I didn't realize what I was actually going into. I thought I was doing design, but what I actually got instead was a community. Sometimes I'll go into the Dixon group, for instance, and Loretta will say, hey, I was just thinking of you, and I pulled these fabrics. These just all look like you, and she'll, you know, kind of show me samples, and I'll, I'll take them, and I, I, I value that so much, and um, I, I, I think it would be a very different story for me without them. I hope that the future of Northwest Design will uh, stay as something that celebrates uh, our connection to nature, because we have one of the most beautiful natural environments in the world here. It's all about looking outside and the, uh, you know, the colors, the, the foliage, the sky, all that, to me, uh, influences what happens on the inside. It's important that, that we grow as designers and also uh, the industry and what's out there, which is constantly changing, which makes it a lot more enjoyable. The future of Northwest Design is very bright and every year is learning and every year is doing better. Every year is applying lessons learned, delivering uh, better solutions and the design community, uh, certainly what the Seattle Design Center um, brings in support of all of our efforts is, is that same that same mantra. Here's to 50 50 50 50 50, 50 years of design.